walnut whips are one of the oldest British sweets still in production. They were invented by Edinburgh confectioners Duncans in 1910. Manufacture moved to Yorkshire in the 1930s, where one million whips a week have been produced ever since. The original contained a light vanilla fondant in the middle of a deep, cone-shaped swirl of hand-piped chocolate. But it's gone through many changes over time. The fillings have been flavoured with coffee and even maple. And mechanisation means the chocolate is now moulded and not piped. We want to get back to a handcrafted version, but with a nod to its evolution, we're giving ours a soft coffee filling. And of course it wouldn't be the walnut whip without its iconic nutty topping. Some things you just can't change. So this is our personal tribute to the world famous treat, the walnut whip. Now I'm planning on our walnut whips being the best they can possibly be, Mr G. And that requires some super special ingredients. We're taking a trip up to Piccadilly in London to find some top quality nuts. Nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. It's believed that walnuts first came to Europe from Persia, where they were the preserve of kings. Walnuts. Oh, look at those. They look nice, don't they? Hello. Hi there. Hi, Hi welcome. I'm making some walnut whips. We wanted to get the best walnuts that we could. Walnuts are very nutritious. They're exceptionally high in those good fats, polyunsaturated omega-3s, that are known to fend off heart disease and cancer. Maybe we try. Yes, Maybe try one. Yes, try. Unfortunately, being high in those fats also makes them especially liable to going rancid. So buying them fresh is very important. They are fresh and we keep it in the factory mm -hmm. with the shells. With the shells, yeah. And then when we need walnuts in our store, we break the shells and they are sent it to us. That's fantastic. It's really, really amazing. They taste so different, don't they? They do. Don't you think they're like, they're really, well, they're sort of creamy, aren't they? And yeah. buttery and there's no, no bitterness in there at no. all, is it? Hey. Buying walnuts like these might be a little bit more expensive than going to the supermarket, but what we're looking for is flavour. I think if you're doing something special and it's a treat and you want it to be the best of the best, then yeah. just paying a little, little bit extra, extra. Yeah. for something that special and it's fresh. is amazing. So if I could have some, I'd be most grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you Thank you. Bye. Armed with our walnuts, there's no time to waste. It's back to the kitchen. Mr G and I love a walnut whip. We certainly do. To start with, we need 50 grams of milk chocolate, which we're going to put through a simple process called tempering. The reason we temper the chocolate is so that when it pops out of the cup at the end, it'll be lovely and shiny and have a great snap to it. Tempering encourages even-sized crystals to form in the cocoa butter. The chocolate needs to reach 42 degrees centigrade and then allowed to cool down to 31 degrees. Using a fluted mould will give you a lovely shape to the whips. Silicon ones like this are available from cook shops and cake making suppliers. That chocolate's going to cool down really quickly, so you've got to work as fast as a ferret up a trouser leg to make sure the moulds are filled before it cools. I'm using plastic spoons as metal ones will cool the chocolate down a lot quicker. While Mr G's doing that, I'm going to make the filling. Two tablespoons of coffee essence. Coffee essence is made with a mixture of coffee and chicory root, which is quite bitter and is often used as a coffee substitute. Splash in enough water to make 50 mils of liquid. If you're feeling a bit cheeky, you could add a dash of brandy in right now. Oh, that is a grown-up recipe. It is a grown-up recipe. Splosh the coffee mixture into a pan with half a tablespoon of soft light brown sugar and bring it to a simmer. Using a clear mould makes it really easy to see where the gaps are. I don't want any of the filling to escape. About 15 minutes in the fridge. Now plonk another 50 grams of milk chocolate into a small bowl. Break it up, chop it with a knife, whatever you fancy, but smallish bits. Nice. Mm. That coffee smells amazing. Oh, I love the smell of chicory. It's so intense, isn't it, and deep and rich. Pour the coffee mixture over the chocolate. And as the chocolate melts, it gets gooier and stickier and more velvety. And that's going to make the most beautiful filling for inside these walnut whips. The 
filling needs to set in the fridge for an hour or so before being added to the chocolate moulds. Can I have a taste before you do it? Yeah, go for it. What's up? No, I'll wait. Oh, that's lovely. It's got a bitterness to it and you've got that punch of coffee coming through. But that bitterness is really balanced out by the soft, light brown sugar. That reminds me of when I was about 10 and I had this amazing teacher. And bizarrely, she had a cooker in the classroom. And it was my job to make coffee essence coffee for all the teachers at lunchtime. But I wasn't allowed to be head girl. So you were bossy then? Yes, I've always been bossy. Let the filling set before covering with more milk chocolate and topping with a golden walnut. Could you pass me the walnuts? I can. Thank you. Do you know, those walnuts are the absolute crowning glory of those walnut whips. Not only do they look amazing, but they're going to taste amazing. I mean, it would be very easy to pop out and buy a walnut whip at the garage. But how satisfying to make these in your own home. You could put maple in the, uh, in the ganache. You're off with your maple. Mm. You love your maple, don't you? So you can have a play. But that, for me, it's such a classic. It is claimed one walnut whip is eaten every two seconds in the UK. I think we could probably beat that record. I think we can. Oh, that is spectacular. Wow. They are gorgeous. They are a real treat. You mm. look very happy. <laughs> <laughs>